you don't know how important this is to me. My wife died 10 years ago, and Mr. Binky was my only living relative. Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your hungover host, Roy Wood Jr. Oh, what a party. I just need an aspirin, some breakfast, and some perfect timing. What the hell is wrong with y'all? You're supposed to be cleaning. Are you kicking for? When do y'all have time to learn this? I just want to enjoy my coffee. Let me out. No. Leave me alone! Uh-uh. Get your ass off me. This woman is a legend. Two words. Rita Good. story about a dog and a cat. I was walking my dog, Twinkle. <laughs> Twinkle is such a cute dog. Let me just give you a mental picture of Twinkle. Twinkle is uh, one of those combination breeds. Uh, um, little hairy dog. Kind of a combination, she's, I think, yeah, it's a combination bath, bat, and bedroom slipper. That's what Twinkle is. <laughs> And combination breeds are very, very popular. I had one of the first combination breeds when I was growing up, and they stopped combining these two breeds because it didn't work. Um, <laughs> I had a Doberman Shepherd, and <laughs> it kept attacking blind people, and it wasn't good. <laughs> they never combined those two breeds again, ever. It was bad. It was bad, a bad idea. So I was walking Twinkle, and... Um, Twinkle is doing her little walk, and she's sniffing here and there, and all of a sudden, Twinkle is in the bushes, and Twinkle is sniffing too long. And I have a 10-second sniff limit. <laughs> 10 seconds of sniff that they don't perform, we're moving on. I'm strict, I know. I don't have all day. You know, I have other things to do, and this is my rule. So I'm pulling Twinkle, and Twinkle, Twinkle won't come, and there's something in the bushes. And I look in the bushes, and... Twinkle is sniffing at a dead cat. It's a big black dead cat is in the bushes. And I pull Twinkle away because I'm not good with dead. And <laughs> I once sprained my Achilles tendon running away from a dead moth. I mean, it's just bad. I don't want to deal with dead. And I just continue on. I push the image out of my head. I just push, like I push out how many calories are in a vente caramel macchiato. I just push it out of my head. There are things I don't want to know. I just push it out. And I continue on the walk. And on our community bulletin board, I see a sign, lost cat. And there's a picture of the black cat. And it says, if anyone finds Mr. Binky, Mr. Binky. I mean, this is a person who loves their cat. Please, please call this number. Good news or bad news, I don't care. I mean, it specifies. <laughs> Good news or bad news, I don't care. And I think to myself, I love my dog so much. I would want to know that my pet wasn't suffering. You know, I would want to know my dog was playing with her squeaky cow in, in doggy heaven, you know? and. <laughs> Do you, wouldn't you want to know? I just, so I, I take down the number and I go home and I tell my husband, who is a wonderful husband. We've been married for 29 years. I mean, he is a wonderful husband. Yeah. I would recommend him, really. <laughs> if I were to review him on Yelp, five stars, five stars. But my husband happens to live on a road called It's Not My Problem Road. <laughs> and if you don't know that road, it's right off, it's none of my business lane. You know, it's just... And he says, Rita, just mind your own business. Give me the number, give me the number now, let me put it in that very special garbage can where I put all your restoration hardware catalogs. Let me do that. <laughs> Have you seen that catalog? Like this thick, I feel like they're gonna test me on that thing at the end after I see. So I say, no, I'm gonna call this number. And he says, Rita, mind your own business. You know why they say, don't shoot the messenger? Because they always shoot the messenger. 
I happen to live on Goody Goody Boulevard. <laughs> and I say, no, I have to do my duty as an American pet lover. And I have to call this man and tell him that his precious Mr. Binky is in pet heaven and he's not suffering. So I call the number and a little uh, old man's voice answers, hello, and I, I should have I should have started the conversation differently. I'll admit that. <laughs> Cuz I said I found Mr. Binky. Oh. I'm telling you I've never heard such joy in this man's <laughs> You found Mr. Binky. I knew someone would find Mr. Binky. You don't know how important this is to me. My wife died 10 years ago, and Mr. Binky was my only living relative. And I say, here's my chance. I tell him to say the sentence again, take out the word living. I don't say that, though. I can't. I just can't tell him. And he says, how is Mr. Binky? He said, he's sleeping. <laughs> And he's very happy. Not, not a lie, you know? And he, what, what's your address? And I gave him my address, and my husband's been listening. He said, why didn't you tell him Mr. Binky was dead? And I said, because I couldn't do it on the phone. I have to tell him in person. It's not something I could do on the phone. <laughs> and he said, mind your own business. They always shoot the messenger. I said, I don't care. So I wait outside with Twinkle, and um, I see a old man in an old Volvo driving up the road, and you don't want to give somebody driving an old Volvo bad news, because they've already had a bad life, they're driving an old Volvo. <laughs> he gets out, and he's so happy, and he hugs me, and he's made me cookies. He said, I made these this morning. Thank you so much for finding Mr. Binky. You know why we call him Mr. Binky? Because when he was a little kitty, we used to put a binky in his mouth, and I said, don't tell me, I don't need to know this, please. <laughs> And he starts towards the house, and I say, um, Mr. Binky isn't in the house. He said, well, he's not at the house? He said, no. He, and I said, just follow me. And he said, Mr. Binky's outside? I said, yes. He said, well, how can you be sure he's still there? <laughs> I said, you're going to have to trust me on this, you know? I just... <laughs> and I, Twinkle, of course, remembered where... She smelled Mr. Binky and leads me over and I point and there's, there's Mr. Binky and he's dead in the bushes and I'm telling you, Mr. Binky's daddy wasn't happy. And he says, how could you not tell me Mr. Binky was dead? You got my hopes up, how can you not tell me? I said, I just couldn't, I said he was sleeping. I was on my way to telling you, I just couldn't get there, I'm so sorry, but you, don't you want to know that, that, that your, your kitty wasn't suffering and that, and that wherever he is, he's happy and he starts to, I see the tears well up and he kneels down and he looks at, and he, and he he turns to me and he, he said, that's not Mr. Binky. <laughs> and then he said, that's not even a cat. <laughs> It's a raccoon. <laughs> I'll admit I got defensive. I said, what am I, a veterinarian? I don't know. It's, it's, it's big, it's black, it's dead, it's in the bushes, I don't know. And I, I just said, I, I, I don't shoot the messenger. I, that's all I said. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I got your hopes up, and then I let them down, and, and then I confused them, and I, I didn't know. I gave him back his cookies. And you know what he did? He just walked away. Didn't even say thank you. So the moral of this story is if you you see a dead cat in the bushes, make sure it's dead, make sure it's a cat, 
and then mind your own business. Thank you very much. That's a legend right there, man. Rita Rutler. <laughs>